Good afternoon and welcome to the Tennessee and BizCast. I'm Lance Williams, business editor here at the Tennessean, here with reporter uh, Walker Moscott and reporter Jaquetta White. And uh, we uh, thank you for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about some interesting stories that have popped up on the business desk this week. And uh, I thought I'd bring the experts in to uh, help us get to the bottom of some, some uh, pretty interesting stories this week. Um, Walker, now you wrote about you wrote about Segway. Uh, uh, you may remember Segway. You know the, those machines you can ride around, and, and we're going to revolutionize uh, revolutionize transport. Uh, didn't quite happen though, right? No, it didn't. Uh, the company opened in 2001. Um, their their original uh, founder, uh, inventor Dean came in, a prominent inventor who's been very successful over the years. Predicted at one point that they would be producing 10,000 Segways a week. And uh, as of 2011, I believe they'd only sold a little more than, than 80,000, and I think there are more than 100,000 in existence, though it's not clear how many they've actually sold. So oh, wow. far below original expectations, yes. And I understand there's been there were a couple of bumpy incidents along the way, I mean, for, for the company. Uh, yeah, there were, there were product recalls. Um, they had hoped to get large contracts with institutions like the U.S. Postal Service that didn't pan out. Um, they had, I, I believe their most recent CEO is now their seventh CEO, so there's been a lot of turnover in management. Uh, Cayman is no longer affiliated with the company. Um, so I believe uh, in 2010 was actually the first year that they ever turned a profit, so they've lost a lot of money over the years. Oh, wow. And, and a, a rather unfortunate incident with, uh, I believe, one of yes, the Yes, yeah. Uh, the, the new CEO, Roger Brown, um, bought, uh, he's the CEO of Summit, Summit Strategic Investments, which is a Brentwood-based uh, investment firm. And so he bought the company in February from the estate of Jimmy Hesselden, who is a British entrepreneur who bought the company at the end of 2009 and then about nine months later tragically died while uh, accidentally riding a, a Segway off of a cliff on his estate in England. Oh, all right. Well, that, uh, that's, that can't make for good headlines. It can't, no. Unfortunately, that's kind of what it's been known for during the last three years. Uh, it really hasn't had a lot of leadership. The previous CEO, um, while Hesselden, Hesselden was the owner, wasn't really given a lot of money to invest in the company, and so he cut costs and helped the company turn a profit. But it's been, um, you know, it, it really hasn't had much investment in its growth during the last three years. So, what does a Brentwood company see uh, in a product like Segway? I mean, how, how does this sort of, you know, brand name end up, you know, end up in Nashville? Uh, well, Brown was contacted by a firm that um, was hired by Hesselden's estate to locate a buyer, and um, so he typically, he told me that he typically invests in firms that. Or the companies aren't necessarily distressed, but often have a lower value and may be struggling, and then he tries to turn them around. So he has no intention of selling the company, he said, but he felt, felt that it, uh, with more efficiency and with some investment in, um, in new products, which it hasn't really released a new actual machine since 2006, that the company could grow and become uh, much more profitable than it is currently. Gotcha. Well, so what, what, are, what are some of his plans? Does he have some for specific things in place that he wants to do? Uh, he said a big push will be um, trying to sell more Segways in Asia, particularly China. Um, last year they sold 8,000 units, and so they intend to produce and ideally sell, of course, 14,000 this year, and he felt that China could absorb about three or 4,000. Um, Segway is also going to release a three-wheeled version um, for security firms, law enforcement agencies, and it's finally going to um, introduce a new version of its its primary unit called the I-2, um, which they haven't really uh, introduced a new version since 2006. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. Well, very good. It'll be interesting to see uh, see what happens yeah, with them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, now that they, they have a, a national presence. So yes. That'll be interesting. And, uh, Jaquetta, you were uh, following uh, the Women's Final Four, obviously uh, just wrapped up in New Orleans, but, but I understand there's a Nashville connection uh, to, to the Women's Final Four. Nashville will host the NCAA Women's Final Four next year from April 6th through the 8th, uh, 2014. The city was awarded the Final Four in 2008 is, and has been planning for it since then. Oh, well, wow. So what kind of financial impact can an event like that have on the city? It's expected to be about a 3 to $5 million direct impact and a $20 million overall economic impact. Okay. All right. Now, you said national officials have been working for the last three or four years, I guess, to get ready and prepare for it. Um, did, did they learn anything uh, from New Orleans that, that will help them get ready yep, for next year? They sent about 16 people down to New Orleans and shadowed everyone from uh, transport people over transportation and hospitality, studied things like signage and team dinners to 
determine what Nashville will do uh, to match what New Orleans did this year and what they may do better. Okay. All right. And uh, how does this compare with other sports events that have been on, on the calendar for that Nashville's hosted over the years? Yeah, this year um, it's, it's tough to compare what the Final Four may be to the Music City Bowl because Vanderbilt played in it this year, which means there was a lower out-of-town contingent. Um, but that event had attracted about 30,000 people and had a $13.9 million economic impact, which is a little bit lower than what they're expecting from this. And the same with the men's SEC, um, about the same amount. Okay. Now, you know, because, I guess, of the, of the national brand of the Final Four and the NCAA, um, are national officials hopeful that, you know, if this is successful, that this will open up other opportunities for the city? That's right. It'll put Nashville on, on the national stage, and sporting events are something that they're hoping to attract, obviously, to the Bridgestone Arena and to the New Music City Center. If this goes well, you could see any, everything from more men's SEC basketball tournaments to hopefully the Holy Grail would be the NHL All-Star Game. Oh, wow. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Well, thank you all so much. It's been very helpful and uh, informational. And we thank you for joining us uh, for the BizCast. We uh, uh, hope you'll join us every Tuesday for another edition. And you can also check out a number of other webcasts that, that we have at Tennessean.com throughout the week, ranging from sports to entertainment to politics. Uh, and you can just check all those out at Tennessean.com. And uh, we thank you for joining us, and have a great afternoon.